The Middle and New Kingdom. The Middle Kingdom. At the end of the Old Kingdom, the wealth and power of the pharaohs declined. Buildings and maintaining pyramids cost a lot of money. Pharaohs could not collect enough taxes to keep a lot of money. Pharaoh could not collect enough taxes to keep up with the expenses. At the same time, ambitious nobles kept keep um, their government positions to take power from the pharaohs. In time, nobles gained enough power to challenge the pharaoh. By about 2200 BC, the old kingdom had fallen. For the next 160 years, noble, local nobles battled each other for power in Egypt. The kingdom had no central ruler. Chaos within er, er, Egypt disrupted trade with foreign lands and causing farming to decline. The people forced in economic hardships and famine. Finally, around uh, 2050, a powerful pharaoh named Mentotep II defeated his rivals. Once again, all Egypt was united. Mentotep rule began in Middle Kingdom, a period of all state and stability and lasted about 1750 BC. Towards the end of the Middle Kingdom, however, Egypt again experienced internal disorder. Its spouse could not hold the kingdom together. They were, there were other problems in Egypt as well. In the mid 17s a group from Southwest Asia called Hikus invaded. They used horses, chariots, and advanced weapons to conquer Lower Egypt, which they ruled for 200 years. The Egyptians did not like being occupied by the Hyksos. The people of Egypt represented having to pay taxes to foreign rulers. Eventually, the Egypt fought back in the mid 15th BC. Almost and of Thebes drove the Hyksos out of Egypt. Once the Hyksos was gone, Ahmos declared himself king of all Egypt. The New Kingdom. Alchemist's rise um, marked, marked the beginning of Egypt's 18th dynasty. More importantly, it was the beginning of the New Kingdom, the period during which Egypt reached the highest height of its power and glory. During the New Kingdom, which lasted from about 1550 BC to 1050 BC. Conquest and trade brought their tremendous wealth to the pharaohs. Building an empire. After building an empire. After building battling Hyksos, Egyptian leaders featured future invasions to prevent such invasions from occurring. They decided to take control of all possible invasion routes into the kingdom. In the process, these le leaders turned Egypt into an empire. Egypt's first target was homeland of the Hyksos. After taking over the area, the army continued north and conquered Syria. As you can see from the map on the next page, Egypt had taken over the entire eastern shore of the Mediterranean. It has also defeated the kingdom of Kush, south of Egypt. By 14 BC, Egypt was the impressive... Uh, was the leading military power in the region. Its empire extended from the Euphrates River to southern Nubia. Military conquests made Egypt rich. These kingdoms con it conquered regularly sent treasures to their ki Egyptian conquerors. For example, the kingdom of Kush and Nubia sent annual payments of gold. Leopard, leopard, leopard skins and precious stones to the pharaohs. Assyrian, Babylon, and Hitti kings also sent expensive gifts in Egypt, to Egypt in an effort to maintain good relations. Growth in effects and its effects on trade. Conquests also brought Egyptian traders into contact with more distant lands. Egypt's trade expanded along with its empire. Profitable trade routes or passes followed by traders Traders developed many of the land that Egypt took over also had value 
more resources for trade. The Sinai Peninsula, for example, had large supplies of two tall turquoise and copper. One ruler who worked to increase Egyptian trade was Queen Hatshepsut. She sent Egyptian traders south to trade with the kingdom of Punt on the Red Sea and north to trade with the people of Asia, Minor and Greece. Hatshepsut led later pharaohs used to wells to, uh, that they earned to make their support to the art and architecture. Hatshepsut was especially is remembered for the many impressive monuments and temples she built, du built during her re region. The best known of the structures was a magnificent temple built for her near the city of Thebes. Invasions of Egypt. Despite great success, Egypt's military might did not go unchallenged. In the in the 12th BC, uh, the pharaoh Ramses or Ramses the Great came to power. Ramses, who the region was once the longest. One of the longest in the Egyptian history fought the Hittites, a group from Asia Minor. The two powers fought fiercely over four years, but neither could defeat the other. Ramses and the Hittite raider eventually signed a peace treaty. Afterwards, the Egyptian and Hittite became allies. Egypt faced threats in other parts of its empire as well. To the west, a people known as the Tenehesu invaded the Nile Delta. Ramses fought them off and built a series of forts strengthened the western frontier. They prove, uh, prove to be a wise decision because the Tehu invaded again a century later. Faced with Egypt's strengthened defenses, however, the Tehu was defeated once more. Soon after Ramses the Great died, invaders called the Sea People sailed into Southwest Asia. Little is known about these people. Historians are not even sure they, who they were. All we know is that they were strong warriors who had crushed the Hittites and destroyed cities in Southwest Asia. All, only after 50 years of fighting were the Egyptians able to turn them back. Egypt survived, but its empire or Asia was gone. Shortly after the invasion of the Hittites in the Sea People, the new kingdom came to an end. Egypt once again fell into a period of violence and disorder. Egypt would never regain its power. Work in daily life. Although the Egyptian dynasty rose and fell, daily life of Egyptians did not change very much. Much as the population grew, society became more complex. A complex society requires people to take on different jobs. Scribes and Scribes, other than priests and government officials, no one in Egypt was more honored than scribes. They worked for the government and for temples. Scribes kept records and accounts for the state. They also wrote and copied religious and literacy texts. Scribes did not pay taxes and they became wealthy. Artisans, artists, and architects, jewelers, um, Below the scribes on the social scale were artisans who just required an advanced skill. Among the artisans who worked in Egypt were sculptors, builders, carpenters, jewels, the jewelers, metal workers, and leather workers. Most of Egypt's artisans worked for the government of, of the or for temples. They made structures, furniture, jewelry, pottery, footwear, and other items. Architects and artists were also admired in Egypt. Architects designed the temples and royal tombs for the Egypt's as famous talented architects could rise to become high government officials. Artists often employed by the say of the temple pro, pro, produced many different works. Artists often worked in the pharaoh's tombs painting detailed pictures. Soldiers. After the Middle Kingdom, Egypt created a professional army. The military offered a chance to ride status. Soldiers received land as payment and could keep treasure they captured in war. They, those who excelled could be promoted to officer promotions. Formans and other pigeons. 
for Egypt farmers and other peasants were toward the bottom of the social scale. They made up the vast majority of Egypt's population. Peasants farmers used wooden hoes or that or cauldron poles to prepare the land before the Nile flooded. After the flood waters have drained away, they planted seeds. Farmers worked together to gather the harvest. Farmers have to give crops to the pharaoh or taxes. All peasants, including farmers, were subject to social duty. The pharaohs would demand it at any time that people work on projects such as building pyramids, mining gold, or fighting in wars. The few slaves in Egypt were considered lower than the tyrannists. They worked on farms, on building projects, and in households. Slaves had some legal rights and in some cases could earn their freedom. Egyptian life, uh, family life in Egypt. Most Egyptian families lived in own, their own homes. Men were expected to marry young so that they could start having children. Most Egyptian women were devoted to their homes and their families. Some, however, had jobs outside the home. A few served as priestesses, and some worked as admis administrators and artists. Unlike most women in the ancient world, Egyptian women had certain legal rights. These included the right of to own property, make contracts, and divorce their husbands. Children played with toys, took parts in ball games, and hunted. Most boys and girls received an education. At school, they learned morals, writing, math, sports. At age 14, most boys left school to enter their father's possession.